Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art, and I'm going to press on reading our book, um, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution. We're on Chapter 5, uh, which is called Lip Service to the Public Health, and we're almost done. We've got a few more pages, maybe five or six more, I think. Blah, a little bit more than that, but not much more, maybe ten. Anyways, we are on page 118 on uh, the sub chapter it's the subtitle is called an unusual suggestion from professor teller <coughs> excuse me it so happens that at this at about this time the abm debate was raging in the u.s senate and abm supporters were very fearful that professor sternglass's estimates of 400,000 infant deaths from fallout might be enough to sway a crucial Senate vote. When Tamplin estimated only 4,000 deaths, Professor Teller and the directorate at the Lawrence Laboratory were overjoyed. The Tamplin manuscript was forwarded to the Joint, to the joint Committee of Atomic Energy so that it could be distributed to worried U.S. Senators. But Washington AEC headquarters did not share the joy of the Lawrence Laboratory directors. What was apparently worrying AEC headquarters was a calculation that any infant deaths were being blamed on radioactive fallout. Wow. So they were concerned that they were saying any death, so that's why they were trying to suppress it. That's our government. That is our fucking government doing that. That's unbelievable. <clears throat> okay, I'll try to not have more comments from the peanut gallery, you guys. Dr. John Totter wrote Tamplin a warm letter of congratulations for his contribution to this important problem. However, Dr. Totter suggested in his letter that Tamplin publish his criticism of Sternglass in one journal and separately publish his own much lower estimate elsewhere. We have never figured out what the thought processes could have possibly been that made such a suggestion reasonable, other than the possibility that even 4,000 deaths disturbed the AEC Home Office greatly. Tamplin declined to comply with Dr. Totter's suggestion. Shortly thereafter, Dr. Spofford G. English, his first name is Spofford, S-P-O-F-F-O-R-D, Wow, his mother must have hated him. Shortly thereafter, Dr. Spofford G. English, AEC Assistant General Manager in Washington, called Dr. Michael M. May, Director of Lawrence Laboratory, to ask how it was that Lawrence Laboratory didn't have, quote, better administrative surveillance, unquote, over Tamplin's publications activities. Since Goffman, since Goffman then still had the, uh, the associate directorship of bio, biology and medicine, the matter was referred to him for resolution. Goffman was completely pleased about Tamplin's research activities and, of, and above all, wasn't going to brook any interference with Tamplin's right as a senior independent scientist to do his work and publish it as he saw fit. A conference call was made to Washington, and Goffman and Tamplin tried to learn from Dr. Totter and Dr. English what was really bothering them. <clears throat> the result was an impasse. Dr. Totter and Dr. English simply didn't understand why Tamplin wanted to publish his estimates along with his refutation of Sternglass's estimates. <clears throat> Goffman and Tamplin could say little else to the AEC officials other than if it were a whitewash of radiation hazards they were seeking, they had better seek elsewhere. So ended that particular episode, and a highly informative one. <clears throat> More recently, Dr. Totter stated publicly, and is quoted in Nucleonics Week, that's a magazine called Nucleonics Week, as follows. Later, 
John Totter, head of AEC's Division of Biology and Medicine, said John Goffman was hired to make sure plowshares could operate in a safe manner. He is now attacking plowshares, and I see no reason that Lawrence Radiation Laboratory should want to continue his services. Wow. Dismissal for reaching the conclusion that plowshare is unsafe and unwise? Hired to make plowshare operate safely? To borrow from an ex-king, to borrow from ex-king Farouk of Egypt, we can say that the combined efforts of the heart of the king of hearts, spades, diamonds, and clubs couldn't make plowshare safe. Why should Goffman be expected to accomplish such a miracle? Other than canceling plowshare, there is no safe answer for public health. There is no description of this fiasco other than to say that we have come a long way on the road to totalitarianism in science and technology. Well, we're there. Totalitarianism is the situation that we're living in right this very second. <clears throat> A la AEC, the appropriate reward for reaching a scientific and personal conclusion at variance with the hope for preconceived conclusions is economic strangulation. Hmm. Can we say Kevin Blanche? Lest the AEC hide behind such outworn cliches as scientists should present only their scientific data and not their personal opinions, we have had a great deal to say on this issue. In our work on public health implications of atomic energy programs, we do our scientific work carefully, objectively, and sincerely. And out of such work we expect, and are assuredly expected by the public, to develop a personal opinion of the public health aspects of such a program as, as Plowshare. Formulation of such an opinion based upon the best analysis of information at our disposal, is the expected culmination of our work. To leave that culmination out, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm going to repeat that. To leave that culmination out would be irresponsible of us. And this, would dub, and this is doubly needed in view of the immense well-financed propaganda barrage emanating out of both AEC and Lawrence Radiation Laboratory concerning the, quote, wonderful, unquote, accomplishments and benefits plowshares can offer humanity. Is that not an opinion? Hucksterism, sales promotion, all based upon AEC opinion that something is good for society. Bastards, I swear. Reading this book makes me so mad, you guys. Conflicting opinions should be aired. We owe it to the public that our work responsibly, we owe it to the public to do our work responsibly and to express our public health concerns openly, clearly, and audibly. We don't insist on dismissing the Atomic Energy Commission if they hold a public health opinion different from ours. Both opinions should go into the public forum for a wide discussion and evaluation. That is, if we intend to do more than pay lip service to democratic institutions and procedures. Imagine our fate if every scientist has to feel that sanitized, cosmetized, party-line opinions are required on matters affecting the public health if he is to survive with a place to work and earn his livelihood. Wow. That even speaks to the Helen Caldecott Symposium this last weekend. That's exactly what we saw. <clears throat> we stand, we can stand the heat of a debate on the merits of our public health opinion if the AEC cannot tolerate contrary opinions, it would be far more appropriate to change the AEC, not to dismiss responsible scientists. We don't believe that the AEC can stand facing the public health issues of radiation hazard in a really open forum. And we have good evidence for that belief. Subtitle. 
how scientific findings are presented. When we reached our conclusions concerning the serious magnitude of cancer and leukemia risk of radiation, it became appropriate in the best tradition of science to present the findings openly. In science, there is a proprietary concern how one announces new scientific findings. Either they are submitted to a scientific journal, which can require three months to a year before they are published, or they can be presented before a scientific society, which is the more usual scientific methodology. Following such presentations, the findings are published as, as proceedings or transactions of that particular scientific society. Every scientist in the world knows that this is appropriate and in the best scientific tradition. Indeed, we had an unusual opportunity to present our findings at an especially appropriate scientific meeting, the National Meeting of the highly respected body known as the Institute for Electrical and Electronic Engineers. The theme of their annual meeting in San Francisco in October 1969 was Nuclear Science and the Environment. If a more appropriate forum for presentation of our findings could be envisioned, we would appreciate knowing about it. And further, we were not seeking an opportunity. The program committee of the Institute had sent us a special invitation to present a guest lectureship at this very important scientific gathering. And in the best professional and scientific tradition, we delivered our scientific presentation to that gathering. As is customary worldwide, newspaper reporters attend such meetings, encouraged by the scientific and professional societies, in the hope and desire that the public can be accurately informed about new scientific developments. This is vital if the public is to be expected to understand why scientific work should be supported. And were there any sense, <clears throat> were we in any sense inflammatory or derogatory in that presentation? Let us look at what we said concerning AEC in that presentation. Now this is in quotes. We feel certain that the Atomic Energy Commission, the scientific and engineering community, and the electrical power industry are as concerned as we are to keep the environment safe for human habitation and to bring society the earliest possible benefits from the peaceful atom. And because we are certain of this, we urge all of these groups to join us in seeking an early revision downward by at least a factor of 10 in the Federal Radiation Council guidelines for allowable exposure to the population at large." Unquote. Now we may be criticized for having believed that the AEC would, would behave honorably and in the public interest, but we were not prepared to believe that the AEC would react so violently and viciously in response to having a scientific and public community learn the truth about the much worse cancer and leukemia hazards from radiation than anyone had previously realized. Some 10 to 20 times worse than even some of the most pessimistic prior estimates. But the evidence was there, and we had to present it. Surely the AEC realizes, we thought, that learning the truth is, only accept, is the only acceptable approach to such matters. They cannot seriously believe sweeping the truth under the rug can forever keep it from being known. The work we had done to arrive at our cancer and leukemia estimates from radiation exposure would obviously be done by someone else in the very near future, even if our evidence could have been suppressed by the AEC. They should have realized that. So it's 1530. And I'm going to stop here. The next subtitle is The Blistering Attack from the AEC. So the AEC is a government agency that has basically sanitized the results. 
we still don't know the reason why they had picked this. I think it's because it's a fat cash cow. They get to drain us. I mean, since since the discovery of nuclear, everything has been turned upside down on its head. And our our governments have been co-opted. I mean, we're in a very serious struggle for humanity right now, much less democracy. And while they may believe that we can ignore radiation, and if we ignore it, maybe it's not real, it's very, very real. The downside to ignoring Fukushima is in five years from now, I venture to say that 50% of the population is going to start presenting with cancer. I, I mean, it's, it's seriously bad. That's our government. Oh, my God. The Atomic Energy Commission is now the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the NRC. They changed their names because they got such a bad reputation for being promoters of nuclear without regard to the human life. So... Same shit, different day, man. Anyways, I'm going to, I'll end here. And thanks for listening, you guys. I really, thank you for being there. It really does make me feel better knowing that there are, even if there's less than 50 people that read this, hear this every day, at least we're getting the information. So, ciao.